Hello, welcome to this how-to video, an introduction to data insight. Um, I'm Brian Promise, joined today by Tim Greenside. In this short set of videos, Tim and I will introduce you to data insight. We'll show you how to create and share reports, chain widgets together, create and share workflows. And for the MSPs out there, we'll also introduce you to, to tenant administration. So uh, Tim, let's, uh, let's get started with the basic intro. Show us like to log in and, um, and then show off one of the key new features of Data Insight, which are a series of day one reports. Okay. So, um, so I went ahead and um, I've got single sign-on going and um, I'm cached apparently, so I, I came right in. But uh, normally you just put in your username and password. When you do that, uh, you're presented with, uh, you land at the report manager initially, and this is going to give you a list of all the, the reports uh, that, uh, a number of these reports are just available out of the box. I've got a couple of test ones that, that, that are my personal reports that I've been working on, but all the other ones are just the standard reports that come out of the box. So the idea is, you know, you can hit the ground running with these and I, I can go through and show you a couple of the reports. So um, one of them might be uh, an alert dashboard. So uh, typically, you know, when you're monitoring your network, you want to be able to quickly identify any device or any link that needs your attention right away. So uh, we've got an alert dashboard that's going to prov provide you with a summary of devices. In this case, I've got some, uh, like a London Core device here, a server, uh, load balancer, and some other, other components. So I can see which ones have the most alerts. And then, um, you know, it, it has the ability then to also give you the ability to zoom into things or to focus on, like London here, I can, just by clicking on that piece of the pie, you can see that it automatically uh, filtered all the other panels. So now I'm looking at all London specific information, and then I can toggle it back to see everything. So that's a, a quick way that you can immediately start to see which of the devices uh, in your environment are in need of some love. And, uh, and then from there, you can you know, drill into those to get more details. Uh, this, within the same report too, there are a couple of additional tabs. So uh, I can view by uh, alert details here, uh, just to see uh, kind of an uncluttered view of just alerts that are occurring. Or I can also view in a tree map uh, format by severity. So by drilling into this now, I can see devices that are uh, have the most severe alerts, and then I can drill into those. Uh, and there's a, a bit of a breadcrumb trail down here too. Okay, so uh, so that's the alert dashboard. That's just one of the the dashboards that come with the solution. Um, a couple of other items I'll point out to you here is that you have the ability to by default the uh, the charts themselves might show you everything, but you can also filter down by a specific group of devices. So if I wanted to do it like by location, um, I can navigate to uh, to location or to uh, a site, maybe sites is the one I wanted. I want, if I just want to see, see that Chicago as an example, I could select that particular site and, then, and now I'm only seeing Chicago devices. Or if I wanted to see Chicago and London for some reason, if I want to see them together, um, this gives you the ability to filter the, the um, results even further to tailor it specifically to what the outcome is that you're after. So um, in addition can I, to that- Can I assume as you're, it, you know, if there were different groups, different groups could access the same type of report template but didn't, and just pick the groups that they care about. Is that the- That is correct. Yeah, that's exactly what you can do. Um, just by uh, going in and selecting uh, the set of groups that are configured for your specific site, you can, uh, you can choose like, you know, whichever devices that make, make sense to you for looking at, you know, if I'm fielding a call, uh, issues in San Francisco, I could, I could focus on SFO and just see those devices. In addition, I can even filter down further. So, um, I could also filter just by a specific device. So if I knew I was looking for like, uh, the, uh, specific like this core device here, I can just focus on that and that will, that will override the settings of the charts and just show me that one device. So sometimes, uh, while it's great to be able to see everything, you know, if you know exactly what you're after and, you know, maybe there's a lot, a lot of components being displayed, you know, so if you can just type in SFO 
and then you know select the device you want you can immediately filter down to what you're after and start to see what's happening and then from here you know you're able to also to drill down further into the device itself so you can see the blue text represents a, a clickable item so i can click on this sfo core one uh, device here and now i can go into uh, another one of the standard reports called a device summary that will start to just focus with um, a particular device as my focal device i can see how it's interconnected into the network uh, and then I can also look at things like availability or reachability of the device where I can see I've got a, a reachability event that's occurring right here um, that went from being uh, available to being unavailable. So, um, you know, that allows me to, to, gives me some context, what time did it occur? And also, um, you know, what's, what's happening. In addition, I can look at things like utilization um, so now that I'm focused on this network device summary, I've got the things that you typically want to look at for the device just listed at the top here. Um, you know, so for a, a network device, usually it's um, interface utilization. Uh, you could also look at it in terms of throughput. Um, or I could look at it by interface errors or and discards to see if there's, you know, problematic um, interfaces that I should look at. Uh, or I can, you know, I can look at uh, the interface availability, uh, and this is a, a heat map format showing, you know, if there's um, the maximum or minimum availability, I can, you can sort by those. Uh, if they're unavailable, but then this would, would um, change color. Basically. Just with different colors, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good, though. Yeah. And then, you know, I can also see things like the CPU and the memory of the device just to make sure that it's performing normally. Um, I don't see like memory leak conditions or high C, you know, CPUs that are consistently too high has, that, that could cause issues. So, so Tim, you know, you know, so far you've shown, you know, a, you know, more than a few examples of, of what can come out of the box. Um, what if someone actually wants to go in and, you know, create something new or even edit an existing report? So there's a few things you can do. One is if you want to, um, make this report your own so you can modify it to your heart's content without impacting other users. To the upper right here, you have this option to do a save as. Um, so I can click on this and now I can call this, uh, you know, my alert dashboard. Okay, I'll hit save now. So now I'm in, now you can see that before I had, um, I think a little eyeball up here, uh, which means I could only view. Now I have the ability to actually edit this. So, um, ah. Okay. Uh, so I can go in and I can click on edit. When I do that, you'll see that the bar um, and also the widgets themselves, uh, the, at the top of the widgets, you'll see some additional features that show up. And that's because I'm now in edit mode. So I can, um, you know, I can modify the, the charts I'm looking at. This is my report now, so I won't be breaking anything, anybody else's work. So maybe if I wanted to, um, you know, maybe I want to start, start over a little bit here and delete some of these widgets. And then um, from here, I can, you can either go in and you can add a new widget just by clicking on add widget. And then this will pr presents you with um, a list of different types of widgets that you can select, you know, so that you could, and then you could drag, you know, like a live map or something. You, you could drag onto the screen to be able to um, edit it. But there's an, an easier way. If you have a starting point like this alert distribution, this might be a great way to start out by, um, I can, uh, do what's called linking. So I could link this to an alert details view, um, which gives me, you know, a summary view of all the alerts. And I could also link it to um, uh, the, like the alert summary view. So by selecting that now, you know, I, you can start to see um, that by, li by linking these together now, if I select just London, then it's going to filter the results. So now I just see these five, five total alerts for London, and I can see them down below here. Um, so that's that's one way of doing it um, and, you know, being able to make it interactive just by linking itself. The other thing that you can do is um, uh, you can do things like duplicating these charts to other tabs. So if I created a new tab here uh, that maybe was, you know, for a specific purpose, um, you could go in and you could add, maybe I wanted to add a map here. So I could, I could click and add a map um, to the screen itself as an example. 
uh, or a topol maybe a topology map. But either way, um, you know, it's, you're able to, based upon the widgets you have, once you select the widget, uh, you're able to edit the settings for the widget here on the right. So if I wanted to add um, maybe a particular device like my um, Chicago Core 1, I'll go ahead and I'm going to add that. And now I can drag that over and I can add it onto the map and you can see that it's added to the map and it's in a, a critical it, be, it becomes an active, an active item on that map that you can, it does. you can interact with. So, um, so anyway, that's how, you know, you can, now that I've created this tab, um, I can go ahead and, um, let's see if I change its name, my tab. So now I can go in from another one of the other tabs, I could add like this alert distribution if I wanted to, to that tab just by uh, doing a duplicate, you can see my tab. So I've added that, copying it. Once that's done, uh, if I go back to my tab now, I'll see that I have my alert distribution and maybe I wanna adjust this and just kind of move over like that. So, um, so anyway, that's how you can kind of tailor the screens to, to do what you want. Um, to be able to display the data in the way that you want to see it.